Would everyone stand for a pledge of allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is convened in accordance with the provisions of the Open Publics Meeting Act of New Jersey. Let the official minutes reflect that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by publishing a notice in the Asbury Park Press on Tuesday, January 8, 2019, and also forwarded to the Toms River Times, Toms River Patch, and WOBM News on Wednesday, January 3, 2019, and thereafter posting same on a town hall bulletin board for such notices and following the same with the township clerk, pursuant to a resolution adopted by the township council on January 3rd, 2019. The notice was also posted on the Township webpage. Councilwoman Yurick. Here. Councilman Cubell. Present. Councilwoman Maruka. Present. Councilman Roderick. My understanding is Councilman Roderick is sick and would move for an excused absence. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Councilman Turnbach. Here. Council Vice President Hill. Here. Council President Whitman. Here. First item is the minutes of January 3rd, 2019. Move the minutes into the record. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Kubel, second by Councilwoman Yurick. Councilman Kubel. Yes. Councilwoman Yurick. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Next are our honoring resolutions and presentations. First to Martin Luther King, second to Dr. Parvez Mahmood, and third to Do uh, Heather Barberi. Move the resolution. Second. Sec Motion was made by Councilman Hill, seconded by Councilwoman Maruka. Councilman Hill. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilwoman Yurick. Yes. Councilman Kubel. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Council join us in the well. Good evening. The first presentation we have is a proclamation uh, for Dar Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and I'd ask that uh, Terrence Turnback come up, our councilman, and uh, introduce our speaker. My honor tonight to uh, introduce the speaker for Dr. Martin Luther King. Our speaker, Joseph Champagne, former mayor of South Carolina. Joseph and I go way back. Bring Better now? Okay. My honor tonight to present our speaker uh, for Dr. Martin Luther King, Joseph Champagne. Joseph Champagne is the former mayor of South Toms River. Joseph and I go way back. Uh, we started our careers here together in Toms River. Joseph was a law clerk for the Honorable Wendell E. Daniels, and I was lucky enough to sit next door to him as a law clerk for the Honorable James N. Siddiff. My first day at work, as I'm meeting Judge Daniels, he indicated to me that uh, his law clerk was new to the area and that he didn't have a place to stay. And I had a winter rental in Manasquan at the time, and we had an extra room. And quickly as we became friends, we became roommates. And uh, to this day, we indicate that we're brothers. And uh, if you ask me to describe Joseph Champagne in, in one word, he's an inspiration. He lives his life as an inspiration. He lives his life in the example set by Dr. Martin Luther King. And I could think of no one better to 
come speak and present tonight. And my friend, my brother, Joseph Champagne. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, first, I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to be among you and to be surrounded by the, uh, those governing body, especially the mayor, and my very good friend and brother, Terrence Turnback, on this wonderful day. I think it's Dr. King calling me right now. <laughs> I'll call you back. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, before I start, I, I just um, have to read this portion because I think that's going to set up this whole um, presentation I'm going to give. I'm essentially going to recite Dr. King's words. Uh, for memory. I have done that since I, I was in high school. Before I even learned how to speak English, I find myself reciting his words. And, um, and it was later on that I started to understand what I was reciting, I understand that. So, um, so I will start by reading this portion, and then the rest I'll do for memory. Um, at midnight, colors lose their distinctiveness and become a sullen shade of gray. Moral principles have lost their distinctiveness. For modern men, absolute right and wrong are a matter of what the majority is doing. Right and wrong are relative to likes and dislikes. And the customs of a particular community, we have unconsciously apply Einstein's theory of relativity, which properly described the physical universe to the moral and ethical realm. With this as a backdrop, I would like to start by talking about the experience that Dr. King had to undergo during his struggles. He faced many midnight hours, and this is one of them. One night, very late, my wife was in the bed and I immediately crawled in the bed to get some rest, to trying to get things down in the next morning. And immediately, the telephone started ringing. I picked it up. But on the other hand, was an ugly voice. And that voice said to me in substance, Nigun, we are tired with you and your mess now. But if you ain't out of this town in three days, we're going to blow your brains out, blow up your house. I've heard this thing before, but for some reason, this one got to me. I tried to get some sleep, but I couldn't sleep. Frustrated, bewildered, went back to the kitchen to start to warm me up some coffee, thinking that coffee will give me a little relief. And I started thinking about many things. Now I started to pull back on the theology and the philosophy that I have just studied in the universities. Trying to give philosophical and theological reasons for the existence and the reality of sins and evil, but the answer was not quite there. Sat down thinking about a beautiful daughter who have just been born a month early. We have four children now, but we only had one then. She was the darling of my life in coming night after night and seeing that gentle smile. And I bow over this coffee. I'll never forget this. I pray the Lord. And I pray the Lord loud that night. 
And I say, Lord, I'm out there to do what's right. I think I'm right. I think the cause that we are representing is right. But Lord, I must confess that I'm weak now and I'm faltering and I'm losing my courage. And it would seem to me at that moment that I can hear an inner voice saying to me, Martin Luther, stand up for righteousness. Stand up for truth. Stand up for justice. And know I will be with you even until the end of the world. And I tell you, I've seen the lightning flash. And I heard the thunder rolling. And I heard the voice of Jesus saying, still to fight on. Because he promised never to leave me. He promised never to leave me alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me alone. Sometimes I feel discouraged. I felt discouraged in Chicago to move through Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. I feel discouraged living under the threat of death every day, living under extensive criticisms. I feel discouraged sometimes. Yes, sometimes I feel discouraged. And I feel that my works is in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revived my soul again. There is a bond in Gideon that makes the wounded whole. There is a bond in Gideon that makes the sin sick whole. It was that same bond. When I was traveling in the Memphis, before I boarded the plane that the pilot started to talk about the threats that were out against my life from some of our sick white brothers. I don't know what will happen to me now. We got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I'm a mine. Just like anybody, I like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he has allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I look over. And I've seen the promised land. But I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So tonight I'm happy. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. His truth is marching on. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing Joseph. I, I just want to add a, a comment that uh, just as uh, Councilman Turnback said he's known Joseph, I've known him since about the same time when he wound up as a young lawyer in the courthouse. You just couldn't help but like him or admire him. He's certainly a person of, uh, of faith and, uh, and courage and, and a personality. When he was the mayor of South Tom's River, we'd get together every now and then and compare uh, notes about how mayors are being uh, uh, abused. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, Joseph, I just want to say this in closing that ever since Martin Luther King's day has been recognized, I've usually attended a ceremony somewhere on that day. And I want to tell you, what you just did was the most moving thing I've ever heard. Congratulations. That was beautiful. Thank you. We also have a proclamation from, uh, signed by the mayor and the township council uh, recognizing uh, your efforts, and uh, we appreciate uh, Everything you've done today, I think it was really moving. You did a great job. And uh, I haven't heard one that, like, a speech like that in a long time. It was terrific. Thank you. Thank you.
Dr. Mahmoud. So we have Councilman Hill is going to do the next presentation. I'm honored tonight to recognize one of my neighbors, Dr. Parvez Mahmoud. Parvez, come on up. Dr. Mahmoud uh, completed his medical training at uh, King Edward Medical School, Medical University in, in Pakistan. He did his internship at Mount Sinai, and he did his residencies at the VA Medical, uh, Sloan Kettering Memorial, and NYU. Uh, he's currently the adjunct clinical professor at Fox Chase Cancer Center and also clinical assistant professor at Rutgers Robert Wood Medical Johnson Medical School. Parvez also in 1975 joined the staff at Community Medical Center and he was also the one who started the urology department at Community Medical. So tonight uh, we want to honor him for his years of service to the community and he will be honored this Saturday night by Community Medical Center at their winter ball, and it's with great pleasure, Parvez, that I present you this proclamation from the township. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a, <coughs> the time is late, so I'm, I'm going to be very short. Um, I came to town actually in 1974. Um, used to be a 200 bed hospital, very small place. They were like 40, 50 physicians on staff. And when you came into the hospital, you turned your light on. There was a board right by the hospital operator. You turned your light on. So if somebody like Mo called and say, Paige, Dr. Mahmood, she would say, wait a minute, let me see if he's in. And she'll, she'll sort of peek out and see, is his light on? She'll say, oh, his light is not on. I'm not going to page him. He's not mm -hmm. here. And then when we, went, when we left the hospital, we turned our light off. And uh, now, of course, it's a, it's a huge institution you know, and uh, become a regional center. Mr. Callagher has been involved with, with the hospital for a long time, and you know, we've been very grateful to him for all his service to the board and the foundation. And um, Mo just rang my doorbell yesterday. I had late surgery. I came home around 7.30. I was still in my OR blues, and he said, do you happen to be free tomorrow? I said, yeah. <laughs> They were giving you an award. I said, well, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> so, so here we are. Thank you so much. Thank you. The, the thank you. Moving on with the agenda, item number seven is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, authorizing a change in use pursuant to NJAC 7-36-25.6 for a section of Bailey Park, Block 573, Lots 1, 3, and 4, for the purposes of constructing a recreational facility for special needs and disabled children and adults and a lease project agreement and sub-recipient agreement with the Tums River Field of Dreams LLC to lease subject premises and construct and operate the proposed facility. This is a final reading. This is a portion of the meeting open for public comment on this ordinance. Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand. Step up to the microphone and uh, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, move to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the ordinance on final. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cubell, seconded by Council Vice President Hill. Councilman Cubell. Yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes. Councilwoman Urich. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Item eight is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing Schedule H, confidential employees of Section 147-1, salary ranges, Thank you. 
of Chapter 147, Salaries and Compensation of the Township Code to establish the position and salary of Property Relocation Coordinator. Final reading. Again, this is a portion of the meeting open for public comment in this ordinance. Anyone wishing to speak, please raise your hand, step up to the microphone, and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, move to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the ordinance on final. Second. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cubell, second by Councilman Turnbach. Councilman Cubell? Yes. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Councilwoman Yurick? Yes. Councilwoman Maruka? Yes. Council Vice President Hill? Yes. Council President Whitman? Yes. Item 9 is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing Section 383-5E10 of Chapter 383, Parks Municipal, of the Code of the Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, to increase recreation program fees for Camp Discovery Program. First reading. Move the ordinance. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Yurick, seconded by Councilman Turnbach. Councilman Yurick? Yes. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Councilman Cubell? Yes. Councilwoman Maruka? Yes. Council Vice President Hill? Yes. Council President Whitman? Yes. Item 10 is a resolution of the Township Council of the Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, amending Section 383-5 of Chapter 383, Parks municipal parks to establish charges for the camp discovery and summer playground programs. Move the resolution. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Yurick, seconded by Councilman Turnbach. Councilwoman Yurick. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Councilman Cubell. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Item 11 is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing the following salary ranges, Schedule H, confidential employees, to establish the compensation of construction official, full-time kennel aid, excuse me, amending and supplementing the following salary ranges, Schedule H, confidential employees, to establish the compensation of construction official, Schedule H, confidential employees, to amend the salary of deputy municipal clerk, full-time kennel aide, Schedule C, supervisory employees, and establish the compensation of assistant rank manager, Section 147-1, salary ranges of Chapter 147 of the Township Code, first reading. Move the ordinance on first. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Maruka, seconded by Councilman Cubell. Councilwoman Maruka? Yes. Councilman Cubell? Yes. Councilman Yurick? Yes. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Council Vice President Hill? Yes. Council President Whitman? Yes. Item 12 is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, amending and supplementing various sections of Chapter 348, Land Use and Development Regulations of the Township Code, first reading. Move the ordinance. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Hill, seconded by Councilman Cubell. Councilman Hill. Yes. Councilman Cubell. Yes. Councilwoman Yurick. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Item 13 is an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, adding Article 5, Code Blue Alerts of Section 388-11, Chief of Police of Chapter 388, Peace and Good Order, of the Code of the Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey, authorizing the Chief of Police to, declared, to declare a Code Blue event when the weather is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, regardless of precipitation, first reading. Would move the ordinance on first. I would just note, I believe it's 35 degrees Fahrenheit or, or lower. That's what, the, that's what my uh, agenda says, too. OK. 35. 35 it is. We can pull the ordinance to check the title. <coughs> it is 35 degrees. That is a typo. OK. Thank you. Thank you. We move the ordinance on first. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Turnbach, second by Councilwoman Yurick. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Councilwoman Yurick? Yes. 
Councilman Cubell? Yes. Councilwoman Maruka? Uh, yes, and I'd like to thank Councilman Turnbach for bringing this to our attention and moving this ordinance forward. I vote yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes, and ditto to Maria's comments. I'd like to thank Terrence for bringing this forward to the council. I vote yes. Council President Whitman. Yes, and I'd like to point out that the reason we, we're doing this is because the state has a regulation that it's 32 degrees, I believe, if it's, if, it's, um, not, if it's snowing, and if it's not snowing, it's 28 degrees. So this is an independent uh, ordinance so that we can declare an emergency if it's um, 35 degrees or less, and folks that are cold can go into the shelter rather than wait till whether there's snow on the ground or whether it's 32 degrees or 28 degrees. It just seemed ludicrous. So we're going to uh, create our own ordinance so we can uh, establish that. And I'd like to thank Councilman Turnbull. Next up is the consent agenda. All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. These will be, there will be no separate discussion on these items. If discussion is desired on any one item, that item will be considered separately. Item A is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing refund of overpayment of taxes for various properties. Item B was removed from the agenda. Item C is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the execution of a Schedule C agreement with the County of Ocean for 2019 for the provision of services, materials, and equipment, road department services in the amount of $45,000, and vehicle services in the amount of $17,000. Item D is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing award of an open-ended contract for special duty management services to Visual Computer Solutions Incorporated as sole responsible bidder meeting all of the specifications. Item E is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing award of contract for the Bay Breeze and Sea Breeze Drive Road Elevation Project to Earl Asphalt Company as sole bidder meeting all of the specifications for a total contract price not to exceed $2,251,213.13. Item F is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing award of contract for the Guilford Park boat ramp project to R. Creamer and Sons Marine Contractors, LLC, as low bidder meeting all the specifications for a total contract price not to exceed $998,107.70. Item G is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the addition of one additional snow plowing contractor, Poseidon Pools Design Incorporated, to the list of contractors for snow removal services approved by resolution dated September 25, 2018, for a two-year term commencing October 1, 2018 through September 30, 2020. H is an amendment to resolution of the Township Council dated July 24, 2018, authorizing a contract to dynamic testing services for drug and alcohol testing for employees of the Township in safety-sensitive positions in an amount not to exceed $10,000 for calendar year 2018 to increase the contract price by an additional $460.40 for a total maximum not to exceed $10,460.40. Item I is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the first extension of a negotiated open-ended contract with Safeguard Safety Shoe Company for the supply of work shoes and boots for Township employees. Item J is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing award of contract for Riverwood Park Soccer Field Lighting to John J. Fackus Incorporated trading as Quality Electrical Construction Company as low bidder, meeting all of the specifications for a total contract price not to exceed $487,600 base bid only. Item K is a resolution of the Township Council for the Township of Tom's River authorizing the award of an open-ended two-year negotiated contract with Blair's Rental Services Incorporated as sole bidder for the supply of steel and Honda repair parts and equipment. L is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the first extension of an open-ended one-year contract with Turf Equipment and Supply Company Incorporated for the supply of Toro OEM repair parts and accessories. M is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the second and final extension of an open-ended contract with ERS Fleet Repair Incorporated for ser services and repairs to emergency vehicles for the Office of Emergency Management and other departments. N is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the purchase of two automated refuse collection, collection systems cabin chassis, new and unused, 2019 model number 520, 66,000 pound GVW minimum or equal for the Department of Public Works from Hunter, New Jersey, Peterbilt for a total contract price not to exceed $559,184. Item O is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the division
Division of Purchasing to dispose of by scrapping one 2002 con recycling truck body at the Department of Public Works, which is not worth auctioning, no longer needed for public use by the Township, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 11-36. Item P is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the use of ESCNJ cooperative contract number 15-16-08 to purchase grounds equipment for Bailey Golf Course from Turf Equipment and Supply Company in the total maximum amount not to exceed $85,141.82. Item Q is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing Craig Ambrosio, Director of Parks, Buildings and Grounds, to execute a cooperative service agreement between the Township of Toms River and the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, Animal and Plant Health and Inspection Services, the APHIS Wildlife Services, WS, for wildlife damage management agreement in the amount not to exceed $11,675. Item R is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing award of an open-ended contract to PMAM Corporation who meets all of the bid specifications for alarm registration and management services for the Toms River Police Department. S is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the Township to enter into and the Mayor to execute an agreement in lieu of condemnation and pedestrian access easement between the Township of Toms River and Ocean Beach Surf Club LLC in connection with Block 1103, Lot 16 in the Township of Toms River, New Jersey. T is a resolution of the Township Council urging the New Jersey Legislature to permit the opening of Code Blue New Jersey emergency cold weather shelters when the temperature reaches 32 degrees Fahrenheit regardless of participation, participation, precipitation conditions. <laughs> Item U is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the Mayor to execute and the Township Clerk to attest to a shared services agreement between the Township of Toms River and the Silverton Volunteer First Aid Squad re regarding billing and collection services. Item V is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the use of project labor agreements for projects in excess of $5 million. Item W is a resolution of the Township Council imposing charges incurred under Section 3 of the 2006 International Property Maintenance Code as a lien on real property and directing the tax collector to collect these costs and impose interest on unpaid costs in the same manner as provided for in the collection of real estate taxes in the Township of Toms River, Ocean County, New Jersey. X is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing a shared services agreement between the Township of Toms River and the Office of the Ocean County Prosecutor for Police Services for the Prosecutor's Program 2019, formerly known as the Fatal Accident Support Team, or FAST. Why is the State of New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection Green Acres Enabling Resolution for matching grants associated with the Field of Dreams project? Z is a resolution of the Township Council authorizing the Township to accept a grant from the State of New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety Division of Criminal Justice in the amount of $60,000 under the Fiscal Year 2019 Safe and Secure Communities Program sub-award grant number 19-1507 and authorizing the Mayor to execute and the Township Clerk to attest to a sub-grant award. AA was removed from the agenda. BB is a resolution authorizing the person-to-person -person transfer of plenary retail consumption liquor license 1507-33-010-004 from the New Surf Club Incorporated to BJ's Restaurant Operations Company, which is in pocket. CC is a resolution authorizing the person-to-person -person transfer of plenary retail distribution liquor license 1507-44-0043-003 0043-003 from Paris Incorporated to Margo Donofrio trading as Easy Liquors. DD is a resolution appointing members of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. EE is a resolution appointing a regular member to the Rent Leveling Board. FF is a resolution authorizing the sale of abandoned and or unclaimed motor vehicles pursuant to NJSA 39 10A-1 at SEC. GG is a resolution of the Township Council accepting maintenance guarantees for a minor site plan known as Wawa, Block 1092.01, Lot 1.01 at Route 37 East. Item HH is a resolution of the Township Council releasing performance guarantees and accepting maintenance guarantees for a minor site plan known as Block 394, Lot 103.01 at 1770 Hooper Avenue. II is a resolution of the Township Council accepting reduced performance guarantees for a major subdivision known as Raider Estates, Block 764 and 768, Lots 51 through 55 and 16 through 30 on Panzer Street. JJ is a resolution of the Township Council accepting engineering inspection fees for a minor site plan known as Block 1108.40, Lot 4 at 642 Fisher Boulevard. 
Item KK is a resolution of the Town of Council accepting reduced performance guarantees for a major site plan known as Riverwood Chase, also known as Nobility Crest at Dover LLC, Phase 4, Block 166, Lots 3, 4, 9, and 15 at Coxcrow Road. Item LL is a resolution of the Township Council accepting reduced performance guarantees for a major site plan known as Riverwood Chase, also known as Nobility Crest at Dover LLC, Phase 1, Block 166, Lots 3, 4, 9, and 15 at Coxcrow Road. MM is a resolution of the Township Council accepting reduced performance guarantees for a major site plan known as Riverwood Chase, also known as Nobility Crest at Dover LLC, Phase 3 at Block 166, Lots 3, 4, 9, and 15 at Coxcrow Road. NN is a resolution of the Township Council releasing maintenance guarantees for a minor subdivision formerly known as Patra Construction, Block 589, Lots 70 and 75 at Iovino Street. And OO is a resolution of the Township Council accepting performance guarantees for a minor subdivision known as Longfellow Avenue, Block 708, Lots 398 through 405 at Longfellow Avenue. Any of the Council would like to have any items discussed separately? Council President, I need a roll call on item U. Okay, anyone else? I think we should talk about item T. What's T? The code blue resolution. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, you can want to discuss that separately? Yeah. Yes, okay. Just make comments. Sure, no, that's fine. And I'd like, um, I'd like uh, item II as a roll call because I have a conflict on that. And I'd also like to discuss item F. So any, anyone in the yeah. public like to have uh, any items we discuss separately? Yes, ma'am. Can you come up to the microphone, please, so everybody can hear? <clears throat> My name is Patty, and I work with Haven for six years this year. Um, I'm confused because when you voted on the code blue, you said it was 35 degrees, but when she reiterated uh, the item, she said 32 degrees. So which is the, it? There's two different. There's two different things. One is a state uh, law that okay. that right now is 32 and 28, I believe, okay. and so we're asking everything to be uniform at 32 because that's statewide. But in Tom's River, the number would be 35. Okay. So we're doing an ordinance for Tom's River. So anyone in Tom's River would be at 35. The state law is right now, I believe it's 32 and 28. 25. Oh, 25. So we want to make everything 32. Okay. When would this be taking place? Well, we're asking, it's, we're petitioning the state. So, so the Tom's River ordinance would go into effect after the second reading and, and I guess 20 days after that, after it's published and so on. In the case of the uh, resolution to the state, that requires state action. So they're going to, the state legislature has to enact a change to the state law in order for that to, to be go into effect. So we didn't want to wait for the state law to, to be changed. We're doing it just for Tom's River at 35. So this way, it's independent of what the state does. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, you're welcome. Anyone, anyone else from the public like an item discussed separately? Seeing none. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. T no. You, yeah. No. Um, T is not there yet. Not, you'd like to discuss T. You'd like us to discuss T. I think that's what we should do. Yes, but um, M uh, Councilman Urich also wants to discuss T. So you're welcome to come up after. Okay, that's fine. All right. So seeing none, move the remaining consent agenda items. Second. May I just ask for it to be repeated? I, I, F, and T are removed? It, it was F, T, U, I, I, F, and T. Yes. Okay. And the motion was made by Councilman Cabell, seconded by Councilman Maruka. Maruka. Councilman Maruka. Motion made by Councilman Cabell, seconded by Councilwoman Maruka. Councilman Cabell? Yes. Councilwoman Maruka? Yes. Councilwoman Yurick? Yes. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Council Vice President Hill? Yes. Council President Whitman? Yes. Move item II and a separate vote. Second. Motion made by Councilman Hill, seconded by Councilwoman Maruka. Councilman Hill. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilwoman Yurick. Yes. Councilman Cubell. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council President Whitman. I have to abstain. I have a conflict with that, um, that item. Move item U for a separate vote. Second. Motion was made. Motion was made by Councilman Hill, second by Councilwoman Maruka. Councilman Hill? Yes. Councilwoman Maruka? Yes. Councilwoman Yurick? Yes. Councilman Roderick? Oh, excuse me. Councilman Cubell? I abstain. I have a conflict with that. Councilman Turnbach? Yes. Council President Whitman? Yes. 
Now, can I, I, there's two other items, F and T. I'd, I'd like to start with T, sure. and then we can go back to F. So, uh, Councilman York, would you like to speak about F? Yeah, so. Or T, rather, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> T. <laughs> T. Okay, so <clears throat> actually, to clarify, so what we're doing, as, as Council President Whitman was explaining, is we have one item on the table is the ordinance for the township of Tom's River. And Terrence had actually, uh, Councilman Turnback had actually brought that up to the attention of the council when we had a day, um, I believe it was Christmas, that was 26 degrees and we couldn't open the Code Blue facility because it was one degree above the limit without precipitation. And 26 degrees is cold. You know, freezing is 32 and freezing is freezing. So um, he felt very strongly about it. We all did, but he brought it to the table that we should have an ordinance. And when he proposed it to Council President Whitman, Council President Whitman actually said, why don't we make it 35? So we all, as a group, feel strongly that we need to protect those in our community who need protection and keep them warm. And so that's the ordinance. The resolution that we're passing is to urge the state to follow our lead. So that's why we're, we're doing two separate things. And we hope to be able to speak to some of our state senators to urge them to raise that bar so that funding would be available as well for at the state and county level for the 32 degrees. And <clears throat> we, we stuck with 32 because that is freezing and that's, we figured, you know, ask them one step at a time. So that's what we're asking for from the state. Council President, um, yes. on, also on T, um, I do get an email from Terrence today that I think Lakewood wants to enact the same resolution. So Terrence is, we're forwarding that over tonight uh, to them so that they can they can join because Lakewood also has code blue uh, facilities so uh, they're going to join with it hopefully it'll get traction with two towns two of the largest towns in Ocean County pushing it forward so I want to thank Terrence and for uh, bringing it to the attention and also for uh, for the resolution so we equalize it Lori is right make, freezing is freezing <laughs> make one comment. sure I, I certainly want to thank all the council for moving this forward and I want to indicate that the, the real thanks uh, go to the people that are in this crowd tonight. And I see uh, Haven Beats the Street are here. Faith Fellowship is here. Connie Pascal, who's always been fighting for the homeless, is here. And you are the people that have brought this change to the table. We're up here executing documents, passing resolutions, passing ordinances. But without your work, none of this is possible. So really, the, the true thanks are to all of you who, who give yourself so selflessly to help others that are, are homeless. So my thanks is to all of you. There's a couple members of the public that like to speak on this, so I'd ask them to come forward. There's a gentleman in the back. Would you come forward, please? And <clears throat> Gal, <clears throat> I live at 101 Dewey Street in Tom's River. Um, I only want to be brief, and I just want to thank all the council members and the council itself for this caring and compassionate human um, response to a real problem for many people. I, you're all to be commended for that. And you're also to be commended for your leadership, because I don't know of any other municipality that's taken this step in the state of New Jersey. You are setting a course of action that hopefully will move all of us forward in terms of ending the scourge of homelessness and and providing the kind of assistance that people need and, and require in our state. So I can't thank you enough. It's a wonderful step forward and I and I, I want to give you another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. Does anyone else want to speak on item T before we move to item F? Yes, sir. My name is Bill Southry. I'm not from Ocean Tech County, but I'm working up here. I'm the director and the CEO of, of um, Haven Beach Streets. And I want to say thank you so much for making these adjustments and making this happen. 
having a place for us to have people that have saved their lives and they weren't crazy to death. And I uh, just want to say I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. And yeah, I wanted to point out item F, oh, and I oh, 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 sorry, okay. come on up. I'm, I didn't. Please, please come up. Um, good evening. I'm Dr. Marian Sorensen Alachi for um, Projects for Environmental Health, Knowledge, and Action in Lakewood. And I again, I want to thank you for your leadership in in a very not only cold season, but in a cold political and sometimes social climate. So your you know your the step is is bold. It's compassionate. I appreciate that. You are forwarding the resolution to Lakewood. We can um, encourage and support Lakewood in promoting, and maybe we can start something statewide in New Jersey and keep the ball rolling in the state. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I am Rosemary Goebel. I live at 691 North Stream Drive in Toms River, and I'm a member of St. Joseph's Church, and I work with the homeless. I want to thank you all for this evening, for this one step is a step in the right direction. One day, with prayers, with people like you leading us, we will end homelessness in, the, in Ocean County. I pray for it. I really do. The gentleman here. Uh, Paul Hulse, Tom's River, uh, CEO of Haven Beach Streets. I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work that we do uh, and sacrifices we make to help the people in need. And you guys are making a sacrifice. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay, yes, sir, come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mr. Theodore Barnett. I'm a member of Faith Fellowship Outreach Ministries here in Toms River. Um, I want to commend you as a, as a uh, governing body for taking the leadership role of uh, extending the code blue. Uh, it's something that has been vastly needed uh, in light of the political climate that we currently face here in this country. Uh, I am glad to see both parties working together, but more importantly, uh, it's a human issue. It's something that is needed. It is something that uh, Everyone in here has been touched in some way or another by homelessness. Um, and because of that, uh, I commend you for having the courage and the due diligence to, uh, to, to make for, or, or rather to uh, bring forth this type of uh, legislation. And we thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please raise your hand so I can, I can recognize you. Okay, come on up. Good evening, my name is Edward DeFreitas. I'm a 40 year resident of Tom's River. I couldn't be prouder, man. Um, most of my life I've complained. I've done some horrible things in this town and uh, Haven Beach Streets helped me. This time last year I was roaming around the streets, homeless, addicted to heroin. They helped me get into a program. I've celebrated a year of sobriety Sunday. And uh, <laughs> through this program, uh, it gave me accountability. It gave me something to come home to, to give back to. Um, I've been, you know, I've been across the street. I I've been to other programs. And you come home and there's nothing there for you. Paul calls me almost daily to see how I'm doing. You know, that, that, the love is just amazing, and uh, you know the, the work that you guys are doing here to help that to, to, to continue is wonderful. I, I encourage and I applaud it. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Yes, ma'am. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to. Um, I just moved to Tom's River. I'm sorry, your name, please? Yeah, can you oh, I'm that? sorry. Joy Holman, 5 Frederickstead Street, Tom's River. Um, I've been working with the homeless for quite a while through my church, Shore Vineyard. Um, I just wanted to share this story briefly. Last year, I had been working with an individual who was homeless. He would daily check in with me in the morning and in the night. And um, he couldn't go to the Code Blue centers. They were small. And um, anyhow, long story short, I didn't hear from him for several days. And I assembled a team ready to go out into the woods where his tent was located. And I was terrified that I was going to find a frozen body. My father was a police officer. My mother was a nurse. So I get it honestly. <laughs> um, and I knew that we were going, what we were going to face. The temperatures were horrendous. Um, by a miracle of God and lots of prayers, he called me. His phone had died. He had been snowed in his tent in Tom's River here. And he's like family to me now. He now is one of our success stories. He is living, renting a room from someone. He does a lot of handiwork around, you know, to make ends meet and to pay his rent. And what you guys have done to empower us who help these homeless individuals, they each have a story. And if you listen to their story, it could be any one of us. We are all one step away, one tragedy away from being homeless, and you're showing the human side of listening to these people and listening to their stories. I come from Mercer County, where there is a shelter there. There is no shelter in Ocean County for the hot weather in the summer or the cold weather in the winter. And I thank you that this is a step in that direction to acknowledge our homeless people who are the faces of Tom's River. These people helped me move in November. They, and I felt really guilty about it because I was like, okay, I'm moving from a house to a house and these homeless guys are offering, I didn't even ask them, offering to help me. They were the first ones to show up on my porch and help me move. And if there's anything I need, they go out of their way. I help run a food pantry in South Palms River I had four of them show up last month when we we'd do a monthly um, food pantry. They came and they worked. And when people asked who they were, I said, they're my friends. And they worked very hard. They give back to the community as much as they get from the community. And I want to thank you for your compassion. Anyone else on this issue? Okay, we'll move the meeting along. Item F. Oh, item F. I, I'll, I'll speak of item F. Uh, we need a Mike, motion on item comments. T. Move T. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Hill, seconded by Councilman Yurick. Councilman Hill. Yes. Councilman Yurick. Yes. Councilman Cubell. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Do we do we vote on F or not? No, no. Not we didn't. We didn't okay. Do that. Okay. The only I I wanted to um, speak about item F. So Bob Shinkelian has worked uh, diligently on this for the last couple of years, and it's going to be the first township-wide uh, boat ramp that uh, we have uh, built in the, in the town. It's going to be a township-operated boat ramp, and it's going to be in Guilford Park, right off of uh, Garfield Avenue. And I'd like to commend Bob for. Uh, Working through this, it was a long process. It probably took two years to get permits and go through all the engineering design. And I think it's this um, award tonight will uh, allow us to begin construction in the spring. And it's a really ni it's going to be a really nice facility right off Garfield Avenue. So Bob, I want to give you a shout out to you and thank you for your efforts on this. I'd like to second that. that Bob's effort. Move item F. Second. I'm sorry. The vote again. Move right. item F. And second, Councilman Cabell. 
Motion was made by Councilwoman Maruka, second by Councilman Kubel. Councilwoman Maruka. I would also like to recognize the efforts of Mr. Chinkelli. Um, this council over the course of, I want to say, the past 10 or 12 years has looked at different properties throughout the town, and we needed DEP, DEP blessing for these permits. And it's been a long and arduous process, and I'm glad that we stuck with it. And I want to thank Mr. Uh, Chinkelli for his efforts in seeing this through. I vote yes. Councilman Kubel. Yes. Councilman Urich. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Next are the reports for the Bailey Golf Course, December 2017 at $51,391.99, $51, $51, $51, $51, $51, The Bailey Golf Course, year to date through December 2017, $1,233,259.07. In 2018, $1,138,710.78. The Winding River Ice Rink in 2017, $104,898.48. And 2018, $112,814. The year to date through November for the Winding River Ice Rink from 2017, $812,588.57. And 2018, $776,876.05. The Winding River Ice Rink for December. 2017, $111,942.89. and 2018, $130,481.50. Year to date through December for the rink is 2017, $924,531.46. And 2018, $907,357.55. The building department for December of 2017, $271,512. In 2018, $204,524. And the year to date through December for the building department in 2017, $2,742,338. In 2018, $2,437,186. Move the reports into the record. Second. Motion made by Councilman Kubel, second by Councilman Turnbach. Councilman Kubel. Yes. Councilman Turnbach. Yes. Councilwoman Yurik. Yes. Councilwoman Maruka. Yes. Council Vice President Hill. Yes. Council President Whitman. Yes. Next, we have the bills. Move the bills. Second. Motion made by Councilwoman Maruka, second by Councilman Kubel. Councilwoman Maruka. Abstain to PO 18-07378 and 19-00140, payable to NJMVC, and also PO19-00225, payable to NJMVC, special lease program. I have a conflict, yes to the balance. Councilman Kubel. Abstain to PO19-00215, payable to the Tom Jura Bureau of Fire Prevention, yes to the balance. Councilman Yurick. Abstain from PO 18-00709 to Borough of Lavalette, PO 1403696, and 19-00037 to Remington and Vernick Engineers, and PO 19-00225 to the Township of Tom's River only as it pertains to the recreation salaries, and yes to the balance. Councilman Turnbach. Abstain from PO 19-00225, payable to the magistrates, and PO 19-00138, I'm a local attorney in town, I have a conflict with the magistrates, and I'm a parishioner at St. Joseph's, my children attend St. Joseph's, I have a conflict there, yes to the balance. Council Vice President Hill. Yes, with the following extensions. 19-00159, payable to Tom's River Schools, Board of Education. 19-00158, uh, 
one nine zero zero one six one nine zero zero one seven one nine zero zero one eight and one nine zero zero three eight payable to own little associates and one nine dash zero zero two two five and one nine dash zero zero one three eight only as it pertains to St. Luke's Church and Tom's River Schools. I'm a parishioner at St. Luke's. Yes to the balance. Council President Whitman. I have to abstain from uh, purchase order number 19-00126, the amount of $8,300 to area properties. I have a conflict. Um, I'm a partner on properties, uh, projects with that firm. And then uh, purchase order 19-0076, 19-00077, 19-00080, 19-000083, and 11900104, amount of $8,129, payable to Mark Properties. I had a mortgage with that company uh, about a year ago, so uh, I have a conflict. Yes to the balance. Next, our elected officials' comments. Okay, we'll start out with Mayor Kelleher. Thank you. I just want to bring to the attention of the public that we had uh, uh, issued a permit for solicitation for real estate outside the area that the council had previously uh, established as a prohibited area. Uh, under our attorney's opinion, that we have to allow those permits to be issued if they're not in that area, but they're severely restricted. Apparently, there's been some confusion with the public about whether or not these solicitors can be there. We want to tell everybody, uh, please, if you're being troubled by solicitors, please come in and apply for a no-knock uh, uh, decal and register for the no-knock uh, program. Uh, and if you have a no-knock uh, uh, membership and people violate that, please pick up the phone and call police headquarters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilman Hill. Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to thank the residents of Tom's River and also the sending districts of the Tom's River Regional School for their support of our students in yesterday's election. Um, I have four grandchildren in the school district. I also have a daughter who's a teacher. Uh, we need to maintain these buildings. Uh, the athletic fields, which we partnered with the, the school board 15 years ago, have reached their life expectancy and need to be replaced. And if we don't replace them soon, it would damage the base and then it becomes a very cost prohibitive project, whereas right now you could replace the, the artificial turf and you still have a good base. Um, a community like Tom's River is like a, a three-legged stool. Uh, one leg is your school system, the other leg is your municipal services, your fire, your police, your EMS, public works, code enforcement, and the other are the community organizations, your youth leagues, your churches, your civic communities, as we have a number of people here today. And if any of those three legs is not sturdy, the the community suffers and I think we're in danger of having that happen with our school system particularly their buildings uh, they have 18 schools plus a number of other outbuildings um, that need work and I'm very uh, happy that the residents of Tom's River supported the children uh, I think that's the best investment we can make in the future money spent on our children is never wasted uh, it's the best investment we can make so uh, I'm very proud of not only the Tom's River residents, but the residents of the sending districts of the region, Tom's River Regional Schools, for, for coming out and supporting everybody. And that's all I have. Councilman Cabell? No further comments, sir. Councilman Turnback. I want to thank once again uh, my friend and brother, Joseph Champagne, for such a, a very powerful presentation, an important presentation. And I look forward to hearing that many more times from you, my friend. I just want to indicate there's really, and really echo the comments of the public, that there's, there's a very powerful feeling here tonight in the air. And it's, it's beautiful to me to see uh, members of the council working together, members of the community working together, and just to, to see when everybody's together to do the right thing, the powerful change that, that we can bring about and the positive change that we can bring about. And uh, I pledge to the community and to this council that we're off to a, a tremendous start, but it's just a start. And we've got to continue uh, to address these issues of homelessness, and, and we will do that together. 
So thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Maruka. Thank you, Council President. When I first got up on the dais tonight, I said to Councilman Turnback, it's like, God, I could use a cup of coffee. It's been a long day. But Mayor Champagne, I got to tell you, you really woke up this room and you woke me up with your inspiring words. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful tribute to Dr. King. Um, Councilman Hill talked a little bit about the referendum. And I really think there's two issues that are far apart, but that really meet together. That was the passing of the referendum last night for our children and the sake of Tom's River schools to move forward. And not just for Tom's River, but the three other towns in our sending district. And also the introduction tonight of the Code Blue Ordinance. Both of those touch the fabric of our community, which is really woven into this room. If we don't take care of our children and teach them from a young age that what to do the right thing, and if something needs to be done, it needs to be done, we have to come together. I have to say it took a village last night to get that referendum passed, but it did. And it took the village that was here to open the eyes on this council to say this is what needed to be done. And we were able to move it forward tonight, and there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to pass on second read. And I hope it just sets the standard for the other communities in Ocean County and in New Jersey. I know we're sending it to Lakewood, but if there's anyone else that has a homeless shelter within Ocean County, I think we need to send it to those municipalities as well to spread the word that this is the right thing to do for your residents and just for our fellow human beings. Um, second thing I just want to talk about a little bit is uh, it's, all in, it's installation season. Once the first of the year comes, practically every Saturday night, we're at an installation dinner for either a fire company or a first aid squad. And that's the backbone of our communities also, our volunteers. Uh, I know I've attended East Dover first aid with, um, I mean, East Dover Fire Company with Councilman Hill and Councilman Kubel. I know Councilwoman York and Councilman Turnbach were downtown at company number one and things like that, but we're out there in the community and we just want to thank our volunteers for all that they do, our first aid squads and our fire departments. And the last thing I just want to mention is um, our beaches are finally replenished. They're getting ready for the summertime. So one of the things I like this council to revisit is because for the past, I want to say five years, we have not issued beach buggy access permits to ride along the beach during fishing season because we didn't have any beach for anybody to ride along, but there was fish out there. So I'm gonna meet with uh, mayor, uh, the mayor and uh, Mr. Guardian and at least see if we can get this, uh, this back onto the books, um, get, establish a fee for it and get that resurrected. And I'm sure the fishing clubs in our area and the fishermen will really be enjoying that. So that's one thing I wanna see move forward. And I wanna thank everybody for coming out this evening. I think it was a wonderful, wonderful night to start off our first, not, uh, not our reorg, but our first official council meeting in January. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Councilman York. So I just wanted to echo the thanks to the voters of Tom's River and the sending districts for passing the referendum yesterday. Um, our schools were in desperate need of repair, and they couldn't afford the repairs that they needed to make before the state took away $2.3 million out of our current year budget. So to be able to make the repairs now would have been impossible without passing this referendum. Um, our schools need to be in good condition so that the students and the teachers can be successful. I've had three children go through the Tom's River School System from kindergarten through 12, and they got into some fairly competitive colleges that um, you know, in order to be competitive with children who go to private school, the school, the public school has to be tip top. And so thank you so much for passing the referendum to support the schools. And thank you to everyone who came out tonight. Um, we support you, but you support us every step of the way. So thank you so much for coming out to support us tonight. And that's it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and be brief. I'd like to echo the comments made about Mayor Champagne. You did a terrific job. Great speech. I, I thought it was fantastic and very moving. So thank you for coming out and spending time with us this evening uh, to, to do that presentation. I really appreciate it. The other thing is um, when Councilman Turnback called me about uh, 
you know, the issue with the temperature, I had no idea that that was an issue, that there were two different temperatures for precipitation and one without pre precipitation. So it seemed kind of odd to me. And so we were talking about it, kicking it around. And, I, and we, we just came to the conclusion that why don't we just do our own ordinance? Because, you know, waiting for the state to do that, the winter will be over and people could be freezing while we decide, you know, what the right temperature is. So that's how we came about the number. And I think we banded around what should it be 32 or 35 and we settled on 35. And if he didn't bring that to my attention, you folks wouldn't have been here uh, tonight to support it. And I'm really moved by all the comments that you had uh, regarding that because it's something really that I think is you know common sense approach to a problem if you have uh, you know one temperature for snow and another temperature for rain and another temperature for you know just cold it just doesn't make any sense and so I was a glad that we were able to put an ordinance in place and have it approved in at the next uh, meeting that will address that and uh, get it to a normal uh, number as far as I'm concerned at 30 below 35 it seems you know 35 below seems like the right number so thank you for your support in coming out tonight and all of your comments with that I'd like to open up the meeting for public comments uh, please raise your hand if you want to speak uh, and step to the microphone and, and tell us your name and address uh, for the record uh, we'll start with this gentleman here of a public skate park um, for the township. Uh, I know there's thousands of residents that live here, and uh, I know there's a lot of parks that are in desperate need of repurposing. Um, uh, I'd really appreciate if you would consider it to add it as a resolution. Um, I know it wasn't on the agenda, but uh, I think it would serve the needs of thousands of residents that currently don't have uh, good recreational uh, options. Um, I think it would be really beneficial to the township, to the children, to the well-being of everyone. Uh, there's a trend for children to spend more time indoors and to spend less time interacting with each other. Um, there's a trend that people are getting into drugs. The, the drug, drug epidemic is terrible. Um, I know for a fact that the skateboarding community brings people out, brings people together. It's uh, very inclusive. Uh, it doesn't discriminate your your gender, your age, your race, your nationality, your background, uh, brings everyone together and it's a, a really good community. And uh, as of right now, I know it's currently illegal to, to skateboard anywhere in town, including at any of the, the township parks. Um, I know it's a lot to ask, but I, I, um, I would like you to can possibly consider it um, to at least start to, to to get the ball rolling on the project. Um, I know there's it's a, a lot of money involved in any project, but you know it, it would be a permanent fixture. Um, it would cost less than two garbage trucks, and it would be a world-class <laughs> facility that would permanently serve the residents for decades. I mean, it, it's a low, uh, to build a skate park is a, a low maintenance facility. It'll last forever, um, and I would just, like you to consider it um, I, I don't think I don't think we're opposed to it I, I what I would suggest is that um, that you meet with our recreation director and and go through it but you know the, one of the concerns we have is that if you build something real elaborate people can get hurt so I think we have to come up with a bait you know see look at a basic type of uh, facility and mr. Gu mr. Guardian and and the council has spoken about that but I don't know how far it's gotten have you have you met with our recreation um, person I met with the engineer okay the recreation director and mr. Okay. Guardian about okay. it last year okay on 2018 right um, I know it it's not on the agenda um, well we're not we can't the way it would work is just so you know is that it's a suggestion that you bring forward then we have to we have to find a way to fund it and and find a location for it so if uh, we can come up with 
you know, an agreement on where, where it would go and what it would, what it would be look like, then we can look at, you know, look at a, a facility. But just to pass a resolution isn't going to get you there. So, so what I would suggest is I'd ask Mr. Guardian and, and Sh Mr. Shinkalian uh, to meet with you and go through, you know, potential locations, what, what kind of... Uh, We've done that already. You've done that, and yeah, you have a have. schematic, any kind of schematic location or design. Um, we've gone over some stuff, some schematics. Mr. All right, Guardian. Well, so what I would say is that we'll we'll follow up with Mr. Guardian and get and, you know and, and take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate. You're it. welcome. Okay. I'll ask this gentleman right here in the front to come forward. Can someone help him with the microphone? Uh, Mark, would you help him with the microphone? Please. No, I think it's not working. I think oh, this one's working. Are... Would you please uh, state your name and address for the record, sir? Yeah, my name is Jerry Boyko from Tom's River. I was here back in November. Uh, can you move up I, to the? Can you come to the front? I a little bit came with the purpose of discussing. New Jersey Guide to Handicap Accessible Parking. I apologize, I have newer booklets. This one's a little raggedy. And the reason for me bringing that up is I had an issue with a police officer who would not issue a ticket for somebody who was illegally parked in a handicap access aisle. So um, because of that, I filed a complaint with Police Chief Little, called the mayor's office, did not get a reply initially from either uh, place. So I came here to the meeting to discuss that. So um, uh, the, the positive part about that, what came out of that is that uh, Mr. Ambrosio, part of the administration recently, took the booklet and put it on the website. Uh, and I've been trying to have that done for about 10 years now. So I'm very happy and I wanna thank the administration for doing that. Uh, I was supposed to get a call the following day after I was here in November from the mayor's office, which I didn't get a call. So I waited two weeks and I decided to call Internal Affairs in regards to this police officer, who I don't blame, because basically he wasn't trained properly in regards to handicapped parking laws. Uh, I explained to this lieutenant, who was very, very nice, uh, listened to, to everything I mentioned, brought up to him, and he discussed it with me. And what he said basically, because I asked him, I said I, I was aware that I could sign for the ticket myself, but I didn't think I would have this kind of an issue. And he said, unfortunately, you can't sign because there's a 30-day uh, limit on the time to reissue uh, or write up a new ticket where you could sign. So anyway, but he said, what I will do for you which is a positive, is I'll take every page of that booklet, because it's not trained in the police academy, and I'll make sure each police officer in Tom's River reads it and understands it. So I'm thankful for that and having that conversation with him. Now my suggestion, since he was willing to do that, is because what he basically says is, he apologized and said, we don't have time, we have so much that we gotta teach these new officers, which is understandable. So this is a free booklet put out by the state, and I think also by Motor Vehicle Agency, is each time we start a new class at the police academy, get a free booklet from, from, the, from the state and issue it to that person who's trying to become a police officer and let him look that book over so he could understand so when he pulls up to a situation like I had, that he understands why I'm asking him. Now, unfortunately, the police officer didn't issue the ticket because he told me a couple of minutes later that he knew the person. Internal Affairs said to me they're gonna talk to the police officer. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into that any further. I have a question about uh, restriping parking lots. Over the last couple of years, I noticed one example, uh, favorites up on Route 37, part of a strip mall there, was restriped a couple of years ago. Doesn't even, not even close to the handicapped parking laws, except for the van accessible 
spot where I was parked and couldn't get into my vehicle. Outside of that, the rest of the lot is not even close. Uh, Walmart got restriped last year. Again, not even close to what the booklet and the state, and this is not only state laws, New Jersey, these are federal laws. My question, two questions. One, who okays when a, uh, the owner of, of a business wants to restripe the parking lot? And then two, who signs off of it when the work is completed? Because obviously the person that's signing off on it is not even coming anywhere near to what the federal and state laws are for handicapped parking. So that's two questions. Okay, so the first question is you want to know who signs off, well, who approves who it? Who approves it first, okay, the restriping so a, a parking lot. If it's line. part of a planning board or zoning board application um, for, you know, as part of the site plan approval, it would be reviewed by the um, engineer or planner for the planning board or the zoning board. And then they would have to, they would have to then uh, stripe the parking lot in accordance with the state law. Which is not, it's not happening. Well, no, what, well, let, let me finish. So that's if it's a new project or a renovation where it goes before the planning board and they get a building permit and, you know, for renovation. In the case of restriping the parking lot, I'm not sure that there's a, there's actually a permit issued. Uh, is that correct, uh, Mr. Roberts? If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a permit that's supposed well, to be issued. Well, it's not. I could be wrong. No, so if they restripe the, par repaint the parking lot, you know, the lines, we don't require businesses to get a permit to, to re okay. repaint the lines white, um, but one one thing we could look at, we can take a look at that and see, you know, how we facilitate the handicap portion of it. I don't want to have re uh, businesses have to come in every time they paint the uh, normal parking uh, lines, you know, white again, or you put yellow lines in or something. But if there's, you know, the number of ha for handicapped uh, spots, then maybe we have to do a check. On well, in my opinion, as a person with a disability, and anyone you talk to with a disability is going to agree with me that someone needs to sign off because ShopRite, which I was after for two years, finally restriped their parking lot, and they did a good job on with the right footage and all that. Unfortunately, that lot has about 500 spaces. There's not enough handicapped spaces that were striped off for those individuals. So uh, that's where there's a major issue when it does get restriped, it's not done properly. So uh, the township needs to take a look at that. Well, we'll have to take a look at that. I don't know what the answer is right now, and I'm not going to try and pretend that you know we have an answer to that. But we have a land use committee, and I'll ask our um, uh, planner, Mr. Roberts, who's sitting right right across from you, as well as our township engineer, to take a look at what could be done. You don't want to make it too onerous, so every time a parking lot gets restriped, that you, you know, you have to get permits. But we'll take a look at and see what we can do. Okay, right? I appreciate that. All right. I just have one real other quick okay. uh, question uh, to the mayor's office. What, uh, you can address it to me. Or and I'll I apologize, and also to the town council. Uh, when I was here in November, uh, the minutes of the town council meeting here are they edited at all before it goes on the internet? Not to my knowledge, I believe that the, the video is the video. Is there any is there any uh, doctoring of the, the tape? But the minutes on the internet itself, well, not the video, but the internet. Well, the, the minutes. There's a video that's on the internet, and then there's minutes that uh, right. that are typed up. Now I don't know if they they cover in exact detail, you know, every word, but they they uh, there's a summation of what was said. Okay, because what I spoke about in November is not on the internet, so that's why I asked: Is it being edited? where individuals like myself or others that come up here are not going to be as part of the minutes. Not to, not to my knowledge, no. Because mine, what I spoke about in November, is not even on the internet. Well, it's definitely in the video because the video was posted on the internet. Now, I don't know if the minute, you know, what was, what the summation of the, uh, the item was, but it's definitely, it's definitely done, um, okay. you know, as part of the minutes. Of the minutes. Can somebody look into that as to the why the lady sitting my verbal is, is not even in? Yes, the lady, the lady sitting across from me is a township clerk, and okay. she, she's very good. responsible for the minutes, okay? All right, very good. Thank All you right. to the Thank town you. council, to the mayor's office. Okay. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my first name is Alazar Zorju, 
from the Toms River Business Improvement District. I just had two quick announcements I wanted to make publicly here uh, with it being January and our, our budgets in and, and all of those things uh, getting ready for the new year. I wanted to announce that we have our annual general meeting approaching. Uh, we have one more council meeting that I'll get to remind everyone once again, uh, but we have to advertise in the newspaper. We send the invites out, uh, but it's important for me to, to make uh, business owners aware who might not see uh, those notices that we have an annual general meeting coming up. And it's on February 14th at 8 a.m. at 53 Main Street. Uh, once again, I'll be back in another few weeks to, to remind everyone. Uh, my second announcement is just to uh, inform the public and the council, and uh, we'll be sending a press release on this probably tomorrow, uh, that Crave, uh, our newest restaurant to open in downtown Tom's River, uh, is, has their sign up, their, their menu's printed, and they're ready for a grand opening. Uh, so that'll be February 1st, mm. uh, Friday, February 1st at noon. Uh, once again, we'll put a press release out, send out some invites, and go from there. Yes, Marie? Quick question about your farmer's market. Sure. In the winter. You've moved, can you make an announcement on that? The winter market starts, oh, put me on the spot here. But I, I mean, it, you move it indoors. Mm -hmm. It's not just in the summertime, correct? Yeah, i give you the date in just two seconds. Okay. That's going to begin on February 6th. Okay. And that goes from, I want to say 11 to 3, okay, also great. at 53 Main. All right, good. Press release on that coming soon, too. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yes, sir. Start on this side and we'll go around. Hi, my name is Richard Costable, 3629 Route 35 North in Normandy Beach. And I'm here to thank personally Maria Maruca for her action in assisting um, to get code enforcement to address the deficiencies in a structure that has been in serious and even more deteriorating condition on Ocean Terrace and 2nd Avenue in Normandy Beach. Um, people, her na their, their neighbors have attempted to call the buildings department on any number of occasions with a minimal or no response and Councilwoman Maruka got instant response and I spoke to her before this meeting today and she's unhesitatingly willing to continue uh, contacting the buildings department to continue the action on this building and we really appreciate it. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. And thank you. Thank you for the council. Yes, we have a, a gentleman here. Good evening, guys. My name is Joe Cerami. I live at 6, Glen, six Oak Glen Road in Tom's River. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what my uh, fellow citizens said over there about our township needing a skate park. Um, as a father of two kids, nine and five, that are both in the school system, I think I second what both of you guys said about an investment in our kids is some of the best investments we can make. And our township's definitely behind. I mean, Jackson Township, Brick Township, Berkeley Township, Barnegat, these places all have skate parks and have had them for a long time. I think we have enough um, youth here and even old guys like myself that would use the thing, it would be a family place and in a time when it's harder than ever to pull kids off of their devices and out of their television and their YouTube channels, it'd be a really great thing. I know a lot of kids are into the scooters, all that stuff, riding bikes, it would be a place for all that and I think just great active recreation for the kids. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen in the back. Colin Lewis, 1727 Old Freehold Road. I never get a chance. This is my first meeting ever with Tom's River, so how can I leave without, of course, commending you? Known Mayor Kelleher for a very long time, from uh, I guess the first time I vaguely was with Shelley when Shelley Franklin got sworn in, and you were one of the speakers and the prosecutor. And I've had an opportunity to work with several people here on, the town, on your township committee. Of course, Mr. Kubel, um, hard him open his heart at Tom's River Unite. I really enjoyed that. The general, I call him Schwarzkopf, I'm <laughs> General Powell. <laughs> He's, I've seen him at everything, the Hanukkah party and, and everything, and, and, and your heart is a, and levels of compassion, the menorah lighting is, is genuine and, and extraordinary. Of course, I just call her Superwoman, all right? <laughs> Lori and of course, uh, Terrence, and I've really enjoyed meeting Mr. Guardian for the first time. 
Unbelievable. You are blessed. I'm hoping, gentlemen, I'll get a chance to serve on some capacity with you. And Maria, I was always looking forward to us being able to connect. So but first, I want to commend you for Code Blue. That's awesome. And hopefully, we can lead other people. In Ocean County, Jersey Shore is awesome, right? We are the Garden State. And what you're doing, Terrence and Lori and, and Mo and Brian, is we're leading this. And now it's all up to, up to us, the great Connie Pascal back there, who we call Yoda. <laughs> um, and if you don't know, the four here, Lisa Stockdale actually runs the Lakewood facility at the church. And they're there every night with Brian and them doing Code Blue. So I just first wanted to thank you, because that was pretty awesome. But I was really here because um, we had a discussion, <laughs> um, Mr. Guardian and Terrence, about levels of equality and the Martin Luther King celebration. And Terrence said, you know what, let's do a proclamation. And I'm going to invite, and, and, and Mr. Guardian's uh, level of uh, enthusiasm, and, and he talked genuinely about the concept of King and, and civil rights and the levels of equality that it brought for all people. And I, I left telling a lot of, of leaders that. It was very inspirational for us. And they loved to hear that. And then I threw it out and I challenged and I said, when you saw a King, you saw all types of people. It wasn't a black movement. It was an American movement. You saw white, you saw Jewish folks. And so, you know me, I threw it out there and I said, you guys need to come and support this. And it was so awesome to see Bookie and Michael from the TRJCC, as well as you saw the Solomon. They showed up to support what you presented because the message of King truly is uh, an American message that we need to stand for each other in brotherhood and equality. And it's the work that people like Paul and, 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 and Connie and, and Marianne and all them are doing that, that is the spirit of King, us standing together in love to help our neighbors and lift them up. So Terrence, once again, uh, you're, you're exceptional and we, we thank you for recognizing that, Mayor and Township Council for recognizing Martin Luther King's birthday. May you have continued success in taking small steps towards equality. Okay? Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? We have one hand back there. Hello, my name is Tyler Nelson. Uh, I live at 275 Harrington Drive North in Tom's Um I've been skateboarding for 20 years, since I was three years old. I was given my first board by my dad, and I, uh, they, my parents didn't get along, and they had to split, and I was taken in by my grandparents, and I'm very thankful for that because they gave me an opportunity that I wouldn't have had if I was with one or the other. I feel that skateboarding saved my life and it brought me together with a lot of people and I met a lot of awesome people and I was able to share my story with them because we're all struggling, a lot of us. And skateboarding and BMX and scootering and rollerblading, it all brings people together and really like able to express our feelings. And I just had a hard time growing up trying to make friends and skateboarding was, that, was my friend for a very long time and it still is. And I would love to see a skate park in Tom's River because a couple years ago we tried doing it and there was a lot of us here and it didn't happen. And I understand that you guys have a lot of things going on and you have, you know, money's the big issue. But I know a lot of people that would love to see this happen and a lot of people that stopped skateboarding because they had no faith in it around here. You know, Jump Street, that was an indoor skate park. There was one back in early 2000 that closed down. I saw a lot of people that I would never thought I'd see again. But because of that park that was built, all these people came together again, and we were all able to have fun like we were when we were kids. And I, I just would love to, to see it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Lady here. Yes. Good evening. My name is Michelle Williams, 111 Tiller Drive, Tom's River. I really had no intentions of um, addressing the council, but after I heard the council mention the referendum, 
I, w I felt I needed to come forward. I'm a member of Tom's River um, School Board. And number one, I want to thank the members of the council for your public support. It meant a great deal to us. Council, council Turnback, uh, Maruka, Hurek, and I believe uh, Councilman Hill as well. Thank you. Uh, it, meant, it meant a great deal to us. Um, a lot of work, but it was in the spirit of hope. And I heard that a lot this evening, too, about other things that happened. And it was in the spirit of hope that we believed that the citizens in our community would know that this was essential and necessary, just like in the cold for the homeless, that we needed to do this. And having your support was just wonderful. And um, again, going forward, we were going to need more hope because the district is going to have other challenges, and we hope that uh, the council will, uh, will be there any way you can for us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lady in the back. Hello, good evening. My name is Elizabeth DeVecca, and I live at 1940 Cherry Vale Court in Toms River. Okay, um, I also want to reiterate what the gentlemen were all speaking about, including my son Anthony, about the skate park. It is something that is a passion, just as football and cheerleading and baseball and ice hockey and any of the other sports that the kids believe in. Anthony has been skateboarding since he's been a little boy even builds his own skateboards. He just recently built skateboard for his girlfriend's son. I have a five-year-old grandson, Anthony's nephew, who drew him a skateboard ramp for his birthday. It's a passion. It's something that the, the kids believe in. It's something that they still believe in as adults, as you saw the, the other two gentlemen that came up. It's something that I think the other towns in the area, Jackson, Barnegat, um, Neptune, Asbury, they all have skate parks. And it, it's a positive. It's not a negative. It's a positive. I understand there's a cost to it. But like my son said, two garbage trucks would be the cost of a skate park. And I would ask that you please all think about it and speak to the other towns and see what their reaction is to it. People from Tom's River are going to the other towns. They're bringing their business to the other towns. When they bring their kids out, they go out to eat. They go shopping. They're going to those other towns and it's taking away from Tom's River. That's something else that I would like you to consider. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, like to make a comment? Yes, come on up. Hello. My name is Jennifer Leister, 628 Pennsylvania in Pine Beach. I want to thank everybody also for the passing. We are very excited of what happened with our schools. Uh, I'm here to talk about the kids of Tom's River and kids like mine that do alternative sports like skateboarding. Um, my kids surf, they skate. Uh, the other sports that Tom's River has spent a lot of money on, like baseball, hockey, um, lacrosse, cheerleading, costs a lot of money. Skateboarding, you can get a board for about 30 or 40 bucks. Take it down to the park and skate. Most of the skate parks are free that we go to. I take my kids to Jackson, to Brick, uh, vets down in Bayville. We go to Waretown, Barnegat, Asbury, Belmar, but not Tom's River. And I live right on the other side of the river. So I'd love to be able to come to Tom's River where I grew up, where I went to Tom's River schools, where my husband teaches in one of these schools, and enjoy the skate park here in town. Mr. Guardian, we would love to meet with you. We would love to sit down and maybe talk and see what Brick has done. Uh, see what some of the other towns have done to see if there's a way that 
number one, we can come up with a plan that works, and number two, we can come up with the funding to do it. Um, in regards to what she just said, the business is going out, because I've got to get them drinks and lunches, and <laughs> you all have kids, you know what I mean. So we're spending money in other towns, we're not spending it right here in Tom's River where we'd like to be spending it. Um, we've also lost two indoor skate parks. We lost the one in South Tom's River that was there, and we also lost one in Lakewood that's now gone. So uh, I have to travel with my daughter, who's sponsored by a skate club all the way up to Staten Island or out to Trenton for her to skate indoor. Um, so I'd love to see something come to our area. So thank you for the support. We appreciate it. And we hope we can get something done. And I'd be more than happy to sit on some kind of committee to, with the rec department to get it going as a volunteer. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, they were talking about this. Oh, Paul Hulse from uh, Tom's River. Um, skate park. I, I skated when I was a kid and loved it. I love skateboarding. It was something that I was passionate about uh, when I was younger. Uh, and it kept me out of trouble, believe it or not. So uh, I, I, I support what that is. I, I believe that it's something that uh, kids need. And uh, I also have people that may be able to help if uh, finances are needed. So okay, thank that's you. all I got. Anyone else? Seeing none move, close the public comment. Oh. Well, you might have one more. You, you just, you, okay, come on up, because I wasn't sure. Would you help her with the microphone, please? Hello, Susan Gato, 1946 Mount Giuliano Lane, Tom's River. So, um, along with all the other sports, there is bicycle riding, and of course, um, I am from an organization called Ocean County Post Polio Support Group, and we are still having difficulties with curb cuts. Uh, at traffic lights or at street corners. Um, and there's no sidewalks connecting some of these curb cuts. TGIF is one of the places that has what I call them a curb cut to nowhere. Um, and actually, <coughs> Home Depot even decorated their curb cuts to nowhere with flowers and plants and things like that. So. I think our community needs to get together and recognize that there are a lot of people with disabilities that live in our community and that want to be out there and be productive and use all the services. And um, so I've seen people in electric wheelchairs on the roads, on the street, I've seen people women or men with baby carriages or whatever, they have to go into the street. And certainly, if you wanted to ride a bicycle here, you'd have to go into the street. So I've lived here for a long time, and I haven't seen any progress in this town. I see statues go up, um, and I see things change at the college. but. Even the park decorations and even the things that have been done uh, by the Grunin, I believe it's the Grunin Foundation. It, you, somebody could suggest that they help with the sidewalks, maybe if they have a lot of money, that they're putting up all these statues. And by the way, where the statues were put, not all of that is accessible, so I don't know who they um, contacted before they got that approved. So anyway, that's just my, my feelings for our community. And uh, hopefully, we could get some of those things <laughs> done in 2019. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, what was the public comment? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to executive? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great job, Ray. As always. Okay. 
Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances to discuss matters requiring confidentiality and or of a privileged nature, and whereas the Township Council is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Toms River in the County of Ocean and State of New Jersey as follows. The Township Council will now conduct a private executive session. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed and or acted upon is as follows. Matters of personnel, matters of litigation, attorney-client privilege, and land acquisitions. The following specific items to be discussed and or acted upon are as follows. The executive session minutes of January 3rd, 2019. Personnel issues at the Township Clerk's Office Administration. The review of status of all real property acquisitions. The U.S. Department of Justice RELUPA inquiry update and review of pending litigation matters. It is anticipated that the deliberations conducted in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Council that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. Motion was made to close public session by Councilman Cabell, second by Councilwoman Maruka, with all in favor, and to go into executive session by Councilwoman Maruka, seconded by Councilman Cabell, with all in favor, at 7.45 p.m.
key has to be on? This key? Yeah. I used uh, to be able to shut them off this way. They have buttons on them, right? Yeah. Oh. Here. Is that it? That's got a bad switch. Oh.
Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to approve the executive session minutes of 1319, the reorg meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.